Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm one of the CBTs and training specialists here at Dove Lewis. And today I'm going to talk to you about putting together a pet first aid kit for your pets, and then also a um, how to create a disaster plan, and your pet first aid kit will play into it. Um, so here are some handouts that you can find on our Dove Lewis website to kind of give you an outline of what supplies might be important. I'm going to go through just a few of them. Um, and talk to you about why they're important. Some may or may not be uh, things that you want to put in your kit, and um, it kind of depends on how active you are, um, if you go hiking on Mount Hood pretty often, or uh, how big your pet is, if it's a dog or a cat, or a pocket pet, or something like that. And then there's also the um, disaster plan for your pets that will be found on Dove Lewis's website as well. So the first thing that you should keep in your pet first aid kit, and again, in your disaster kit, is an information card. So I just kind of quickly filled out one on one of my pets, Bomi, um, his rough age um, or year of birth. He's adopted, so we don't really know when he was exactly born. My information, phone numbers, um, it says what kind of breed he is, he's a mix. Current medications, which he's not on any medications, but he is on Saparica Trio as a preventative. Uh, make sure that you have, whether they are spayed or neutered, um, any allergies are really important because you can take this with you and turn it into a vet clinic or give it to somebody or maybe, um, you know, you're having a friend that's helping you and this way they have it all on hand already. It's great. Um, your primary veterinary clinic and then maybe an emergency clinic if you'd like to go ha have uh, that to refer to and then another nice thing at the bottom is having their microchip number and rabies tag number in case you know they were to get lost and you have to go and make sure that their information is updated or you want to call the county or something like that and let them know that your pet's lost that rabies um, tag number will be helpful for that okay so first off the pet information card we're going to start with a nylon leash these are really great the nylon slip leashes because they're a little bit more difficult to chew through a and then if you come across a stray pet or um, try to catch a loose dog or something like that. This gives you a great way of trying to slip it over their head and then it tightens down. And it tightens, but it should not, you know, they can only pull so hard and that way they can't slip out of it. So we use these in hospital a lot. I carry them in my car. Um, and that way, if I have a pet in the road, I'm gonna try and use this uh, if I decide to try and try and help catch them. Um, uh, obviously, if you you have a small pet, you want to have a crate or a carrier close by. That way you can pack your pets up if you need them. Uh, in a safe space uh, for travel. Now we're gonna talk about some bandage material, but I wanna start off by saying that if you are going to be placing a bandage, it needs to be a temporary thing and you're going to seek medical attention elsewhere. Placing a bandage incorrectly or having one on for too long that isn't placed properly um, can cause more harm than good and it could cause them to have some swelling, it could cut off blood supply, things like that. So these need to really be some temporary solutions. Um, Okay, so we're gonna start with a non-adherent pad. Say we have a little um, abrasion on our, on our paw that's um, maybe weeping a little bit. So this will hopefully not adhere or not as much as using like a cotton ball or cotton gauze and it won't stick to that wound as much. Next, you'll use cotton gauze and you wrap this pretty tightly because it does pull apart pretty well. So make sure you find something that when you pull it, it, it does this. When bandaging a limb, you need to make sure that you're starting all the way at the toes and then moving to above wherever they are um, injured. That way it keeps equal pressure. If I put a bandage here, my hand's gonna swell. So make sure that you're doing that too. But again, this is a temporary solution until you seek help elsewhere. And on top of your um, cotton padding, you will have your cohesive wrap, ace bandage, vet wrap, um, I think the other name for it is Coban. Um, so something like that, and I can turn it around and show you what that looks like too. This is really elasticy. You wanna make sure that you're not putting this on too tight, but it does um, help hold things on. Make sure that it's not too tight. Okay, we have a couple different sizes too, small dog or cat, larger dog or cat. Um, we have some adhesive first aid tape for bandages. So if you need to utilize some tape for anything, this is what you would use. Human adhesive bandages um, or uh, should not be used on pets, they stick really well, which is great for us, but remember pets have hair and that's gonna be pretty painful when you have to take that off. This doesn't stick very much, so you want something that's like that, but it does do enough for you know certain tasks that you might need it for. Um, okay, we talked about bottled water, so we have some sterile saline, um, and I just keep the cap on it until it's been used, and you're gonna, you can use this for flushing eyes or um, other things that are near the face that you wanna have 
something that's a little bit more uh, balanced. This won't dry the eyes out like water would, if, but if you're in a pinch, you could use water to flush eyes as well. A digital thermometer if you need to take their temperature, so we just use a regular digital thermometer. It is taken rectally. Please be careful when you're doing this at home. And then you'll want to use some lubricant. We'll make it a little bit easier and nicer. All right, the next things. We need you to stay safe because if you're not safe, you can't help your pet. So a muzzle, if you have um, a pet that could utilize a muzzle. Um, I know my dog, Bomi, gets a little nervous when, we, when he's in a high stress situation. So this just helps protect him so that I can help him. If you need something like maybe you have a pet who has longer hair, it's great to have a pair of clippers in your first aid kit. Not necessary, but just be very careful if you're going to be cutting anything with scissors. We see a lot of um, patients that have little nicks from scissors and it happens because patient people, you know, pets move. So just be very careful when you are doing any kind of clipping. Um, that's why clippers are usually the best option. So they make little ones that you could probably keep in a pack. Um, towels are another great thing to have. You can use towels for cleaning, of course. You can use towels for wrapping and stabilizing something. Um, and then you can use towels as a sling. Maybe you have a bigger dog that needs to have a sling, like needs help walking or something like that. Put this underneath their lower abdomen by their back legs and you can use it as a sling. The other thing that we can do is if we have a very painful dog or cat, you can kind of wrap this around their head and help guide them into a carrier to protect yourself. And just cleaning them off and drying them off, of course. Okay, so now that we have um, basic supplies for our pet first aid kit, and again, that may change depending on what you may need for your pet or what kind of activities you tend to do, we'll talk about creating a disaster plan. Um, if an emergency situation arises, it's always best to be prepared. So you can use this wonderful list as a checklist um, because I know that it's probably a little bit unrealistic to have an extra bag of food aside or extra bowls and things like that but I would go through the house and pick up the things on the list as I am needing to evacuate. But the first step is to develop a clear evacuation plan with your family and have a meeting spot. So for example, we would meet at the Fred Meyer closest to our house if we had to evacuate and we weren't together. Um, practice kenneling your pets. It's really important, you know, sometimes cats don't take a uh, don't go in a kennel unless they're going to um, the vet. So try and make it a little bit more of a um, positive situation by maybe feeding them or giving them some treats in their kennel every once in a while because it will be a lot easier in a situation where you are um, needing to evacuate or something like that if they cooperate. <laughs> um, make sure that all your pets are wearing collars and IDs and even if you don't keep them on them at all times, um, making sure that you have those close by so that you can put them on. Um, again, making sure that your pet's microchip is up to date. That way, if they get separated from you, at least um, the most up-to-date contact information is with the microchip company. Um, a fully stocked um, emergency kit, so make sure that you, know, you, you use that bottle of water for giving your dog a drink the other day, so make sure that you restock that. Um, Things that you should have that were not in the pet first aid kit, um, a current photo maybe, although this does recommend having a current photo of your pet just because you know they change throughout time. Um, packing litter for your cat, uh, disposable litter trays if a large litter box is not easy to maneuver and carry, um, cleaning supplies, um, maybe uh, the litter scooper, uh, bedding and blankets, uh, maybe a longer lead for a, a dog, that way you can still keep them uh, close by, but they don't need to have a short leash. Maybe you'll be somewhere where that works in a park or something. Um, and then making sure that you have food and water for a minimum of three to five days. The other thing that you'll make, need to make sure to grab is if your pet is on any current medications to bring those with you, and then a list of local emergency clinics and other veterinary clinics because maybe you can't make it to the emergency clinic. All right, I hope that going through the basics of pet first aid supplies and creating a disaster plan was helpful. Um, feel free to look on Dove Lewis's website for some pet first aid training and attend one of those. Thank you.